All right. So I'd like to call the February 6, 2023 meeting of the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board to order. Uh, we'll first start out with the um, introduction of the board members. I'm Rachel Zenberry, Chair of the Board. Steve Revelack with us. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair. Uh, Gene Benson. I'm here. Kim Lyle. And uh, Kelly Lanema from the Department of Planning and Community Development. Here. We should have uh, Claire Ricker joining us later this evening. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and uh, kick off with our first agenda item, which is the schedule, outreach, and engagement for 2023 town meeting, the 2023 town meeting zoning amendments. And I'll hand it over to Kelly. Um, so we had originally anticipated that there would be 12 amendments from the ARB, which were voted on at last um, at the last hearing, and then we also received another four citizen petitions. Um, on Friday, it was requested of us by the town manager and town council that all zoning amendments be postponed until fall for a special town meeting. And so those amendments would be, um, the idea that was that they would prefer that all zoning be heard in the fall so that special so that annual town meeting the spring could be reserved for financial and administrative work their request was that only that the board only advance to town meeting um, any amendments that could be reviewed um, as part of a consent agenda that the board would feel confident could be approved as part of the consent agenda um, my understanding of just the amendments that the board approved um, at the last meeting is that that pretty much leaves us with only the uh, with the section 3.1 building enforcement amendment. Um, I apologize that we didn't know about this sooner. <laughs> it would have maybe changed the way that we worked on some of these amendments. Um, but this has been the request. Um, and what this would require is a vote by the board at the next hearing um, to move those amendments to a special town meeting in the fall. Um, in the meantime, we can, if, if the board is amenable to that, we can we can work and collaborate on an outreach and engagement schedule kind of from here going through the fall, um, specifically focused around economic development, the Arlington Heights Business District, and then MBTA communities. Um, as both Steve and Ken are both on the MBTA Communities Working Group, so those things would be aligned. And the, the message then would be that the board is moving forward on specific amendments to address economic development in the business districts, um, trying to encourage redevelopment that preserves as much ground floor commercial as possible, um, while also promoting mixed use, and then a separate, set, a separate amendment for MBTA communities. Um, but that's the request from town council and uh, the town manager's office at this point. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I'll uh, we'll start with Kim. It's mainly from town manager, not town council. I, I can't see yeah. a town council has anything. Uh, yeah, it was primarily from the town manager. Okay. I don't see a problem with this. I think it gives us a little more time. I'm okay with that. Does that apply to the residents submitting warrants or only to Right. So um, because any because any hearings we need to we need to submit the legal ad for any hearings by this Friday. So what I need to do after tonight's discussion, uh, because I have already tentatively scheduled those those hearings with the residents. Um, based on the board's discussion tonight, I would reach out to the petitioners tomorrow and alert them that you know this is the recommendation um if it is their own prerogative that they want to really push through however our recommendation would be to um also have them it, it's, it's sort of like akin to what was done in 2020 which is that you know we would we would work with them to try to advance them in the fall instead of um, pushing them through this spring if, if they're really adamant on doing it, we, you know, it's their own prerogative. They, they're able to do that, and we would have to schedule the hearings. Um, but that would be our recommendation. Uh, 
Now two of the four resident ones, I think, really fit into the economic development piece. The other two don't. Right. But we'd like them to respond to the follow us. So I, I have reached out to Tom Perkins because I know there is another citizen group that's working on an affordable housing overlay. Um, and, and I have asked him if he is collaborating with that group because I know they're interested, they're actually working with Golston and Stores and um, going to do some outreach and do a, lo do a lot of work to create that. And their intent was to bring that to special town meeting in the fall. So, you know, my recommendation to him would be to continue to work with them um, or to, to try to work with them if, unless he really was insistent on doing his own amendment. Um, and then, you know, I'd, I'd be talking to uh, Mr. Fleming about the downtown business parking minimums and seeing if he'd be interested in advancing the open sp the usable open space article as well. So, um, it just what what I had heard from the town manager was that he really wanted anything that would have substantive discussion to be moved to the hall, and I don't see any of those as I, the only one I could imagine would that would possibly be on a consent agenda would be the um, Anderson article um, if it were if the town meet if um, the ARB voted action is that Kristen Anderson? yeah yeah she submitted a proposal to um, allow animal daycares as a use in the industrial district that's one of the the industrial district uses was one that we had tabled for this. For yeah. For, for the spring to, to look at in the fall. So that's something that we could right. certainly yes. let her know oh, yeah. and invite her to be a part of that discussion mm -hmm. as we prepare for the fall. Okay. I, um, you know, I, I'm amenable to the town manager's request. I was just curious about um, if the manager express or you know made any expressions as to uh, why um, or the thought process behind uh, moving things around like this. Yeah. Was it just to break up the meetings or? Um, so there's sort of two parts to it. I think one is that um, there was a feeling that last year the articles were sort of wide ranging and not organized around a particular theme or that, that weren't like, I, I think it, it's sort of the, it's sort of the inverse of like this year, what we were trying to do was really focus on the business districts. And I think um, there's a desire to have that be a very specific message to town meeting that um, that's very understandable. And it's like, here's what we are explicitly trying to do. Um, I don't think that the manager understood that that's really that we were trying to put that message forward. Um, but I think even so, there's just a desire to, to keep town meeting a little bit shorter this spring and then focus exclusively on zoning in the fall. Um, there are some benefits to perhaps doing that. And I know this has been something that the board has discussed. Uh, I think it was in 2019 was the idea of starting to focus on zoning amendments in the fall so that you know, town meeting members, there's a third of town meeting members that are either reelected or new to town meeting member, being a town meeting member, and they're elected in April. So to be able to have a little bit more time to do some outreach, talk about zoning, get them familiar with amendments before they're actually doing a vote, that's, that's a potential benefit. Um, but otherwise, I think it was really about just having a cohesive message and really organizing the amendments around, around a theme or two. So what it would be in the fall would be business and economic development, um, housing regarding MBTA communities, and then corrections to the industrial districts. So. Yeah, there's, I believe in my time on town meeting last year was I think the longest we ran. And yeah. for a while there was some concern about whether we would have to add nights yeah. in order to finish on time. and. Yeah, I mean, even for that reason, ensuring that the, you know, the fiscal business gets done uh, at a time of that, I mean, that alone, I think, is, is
is makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, is it fair to say the town manager will not be the town manager next mm -hmm. September? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I, I just have two thoughts that I wanted to share. One is um, pro and one is con. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, because I think that it's, it's not very clear. Um, in some ways, I think that we were very deliberate about focusing on the business districts and the industrial districts this yeah. year, or for, excuse me, for Springtown meeting, so that there was um, not confusion around what is applicable to business dis districts versus what is applicable to residential districts, which sometimes confuses uh, the town meeting yeah. members who don't work with zoning every yes. day of the week. Zoning is complex yeah. and it's hard for people that don't deal with it regularly to understand what the implications are. Given that though, I also feel like one of the things that's really important to, especially the items in the list that we're looking at here that are items uh, H through P, um, the business and the Arlington Heights Business District items that are that we really need to be able to prepare visuals to yeah. accompany this so that people can understand not only what this is, but more importantly, what it does not um, mean for the scale of, of buildings, for the look and feel of the communities. Um, and I think that that is something that we need to make sure that the Department of Planning and Community Development has the bandwidth to be able to work with us to prepare and with moving into fall town meeting gives us more time to prepare those documents so that people who don't work with zoning every day have the ability to really visualize what these words mean to me that would be a benefit so you know speak out of those sides of my mouth and that i like the fact that we were um that we were isolating business in the fall, residential in the, or excuse me, business in spring, residential in the fall. But at the same time, I think if this allows us more time to create the documentation and engagement that we need so that uh, the town meeting members more fully understand what it is this means, that could be a benefit as well. Do we know when the fall time meeting will be? So I spent like the last hour putting together a potential schedule for engagement and I can talk you through it. Perfect. Um, I think what it would mean is that, so we kind of have to work backward because um, MBTA communities is going to require, if if we want to participate in the fossil fuel ban pilot program, that application has to be into um, the state by November 10. And so it we do not have to have it passed, but I think it would be beneficial to have that, have like have MBT communities be probably one of the first things on the agenda. In which case, I would think that a special town meeting would probably start, um, I think the 16th is Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, so it would probably maybe start on Wednesday the 18th or the 23rd. Um, that would give town meeting time to, I, I don't know if it would take a whole night. It's, it's hard to tell until we get through this town meeting to see what the body, like what the body composition is and what it's like to be back in person again and how long it takes to get through specific articles. Um, but this this is my guess. Um, with that in mind, now I know a special town meeting, we don't have the same kind of requirements for getting the report to town meeting. Like it doesn't have to be that many weeks in advance like it does typically for annual town meeting. Uh, so I was looking at schedules from previous years. I think in 20, was it 2019 we had, um, no, 2018, there was a special town meeting in February and then another one in December, both for marijuana uses. And those, the report was issued just a week or so in advance of town meeting. Um, so it was a little bit more compressed timeline, in which case the hearings would probably fall, you know, in September through the beginning of town. Uh, so then the report, the hearings in the report, I would say maybe like a week or two before town meeting would begin. 
So then we've got to have, you know, legal ads two weeks in advance. And what I was thinking is like in this phase, this early phase here before town meeting, I've kind of blocked out town meeting because if we are doing outreach and engagement, town meeting members aren't going to be paying attention during town meeting. Um, so I think what we could do is kind of issue a press release about like ARB advancing articles about business and economic development at special town meeting in the fall. Here's times when you can meet with us, you know, like really be very clear right now in the spring about like, here's what's going to be coming in the fall. Um, you can meet with us at these times. Here's what we're going to be doing when. Um, possibly having a joint ARB and select board meeting. Um, I know we've talked about whether those are beneficial or not, but I think at some point in this process, we may want to meet with the select board and say, here's what we're, here's what we're advancing and why. Um, and then possibly having some sort of, we could, we could begin to draft some options. So I think in the, in the memo that we prepared for you back in December, we had kind of talked through some of the pros and cons and, and whether certain amendments should be proposed for town meeting. I think we could start to, we could start to pick into those and start to say, well, here are the things that we want to hear from people on for each of these amendments. So like, we want to know, is it about like, is it about step backs in the, um, the narrower streets or on the main streets or, you know, like it just kind of like figure out like what are the things that we actually need public comment on um, and do like a community workshop or an open house to kind of talk about these things and start talking about like we at one of our department head meetings, we can share with department heads and kind of talk about this too, because I think both understanding, you know, from the town assessor, from the treasurer, from the clerk and DBW, like, here's the things like, let us, we, we need you engaged on um, issues around MBTA communities and around business and economic development. So kind of giving them a heads up because I think people will ask us, you know, what's what's the financial implication of, of these various zoning amendments or what does this mean for infrastructure? And we kind of need to know that. Um, during town meeting, I think we could take some time to because if we're not talking about zoning amendments, it does give staff some time to really start to dig into these graphics, um, start to dig into like refining the options, creating educational materials so that we can go back out to the community. But this would kind of be a downtime for staff to work on these things. Um, and then coming back to the community here and then town meeting prep really begins in like August through October. So hearings we're proposing would be in September, correct? Yes. This would not be in August? Okay. Yeah. That would also allow us to have our fifth board member. That would be the other advantage is that we would have that board member identified. Right. <laughs> Hopefully. It's half a year to get Steve. Well, that was the gubernatorial yeah. situation. It was worth it. It yes. was definitely worth it. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, can I just take back? question of this that's not quite this yeah um you tell us going to help us with the graphics yes okay so we For have mbta communities no okay limited scope yeah so i'm, I'm concerned then yeah. that we i know you guys do a great job okay. but it's not you're not gonna offend me don't worry i don't think we have any any uh any horses in a barn to help us with the graphics because we, we're gonna fall short like every you know, I, I, we've done this when the complication happens. We just fell short of all the graphics to explain. Now that we have a little more time, do we have funding so we can hire someone to help us with the graphics? Because I think the graphics is key so that everybody can understand what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a diagram uh, showing setbacks and lines and, and whatever. I think we have to go a, a little step further and maybe show a little vignettes of sketches of the, of the road where say this is the kind of feeling we're trying to achieve oh um, this is a business strip where uh, how you see it walking how you see it driving how you perceive it in little uh, clusters where it's a center where, where it may be a, a center piece of town or this may be just a side road but it's businesses just different feelings and you need someone to do a rendering of that, I think. And I'd say the other thing really is to help people understand 
how slowly this change yeah. actually does occur. Yes. And that because the opportunity is there does not mean that every landowner along the corridor is going to, you know, next week um, put forth a development scheme in order to fully build out to the maximum, um, to the maximum What's more allowed? footage, yeah. right, that's, that's allowed on their property. So I, I think being able to use this historical data to be yes. able to identify, again, how quickly or not things actually do change over time is something that might be helpful for people to visualize as well. If um, just going off that, one of the the first of the two ADU proposals, so I think this would have been 2019-ish, um, one of the concerns expressed during town meeting was that there would be, you know, we've got seven or 8,000 single family homes and we're gonna have seven or 8,000 ADUs in no time. And in the two years since our ADU article has passed, we've had four constructed. Yeah. So it's- Is it, it four? Yep. Two via special permit and two as of right. Oh. Well, not constructed yet. Okay, because um, it's two. two. There's two that have been approved, but haven't yet built, um, started construction and then two that- Okay. Yeah. All right, so I was right. I asked before. Yeah. And I was told two. Yes, yeah. And I was like, wow, it doubles? Yeah. <laughs> um, can we parlay this if Sandy's asking us for this? Oh, uh, come on, Jean. Go right ahead. I'm listening. Um, can he uh, give us a little um, financial assistance in getting some of this rendering? Because uh, otherwise, we're stuck dead in the waters again. Like, so if you can help us out. Um, yeah, in, in, I'm the in the coffers. I'm happy to talk with Claire about that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, tell me it's Jean's idea. Okay. <laughs> oh, Gene will follow up. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I mean, I think this is fine. It's a little disappointing. Yeah. Because there are some things I think would have been nicer to have done sooner. To have a place later, for our... To have yeah. a place. The other thing I just perceive is that there's going to be a real rock and sock on fall town meeting because not only are we going to have all of these and if the affordable housing trust fund group puts forth a um, affordable housing overlay on yeah. top of that that's just going to be a lot of zoning amendments that could generate a lot of comments I think clarity of message is going to be extremely important. Um, and it, I think there may be, I don't know, I think uh, it, my other concern is just having even more citizen petitions because I just want to make sure that we're very clear about what is being advanced and why. And um, that, uh, these are priorities for the board. And that, that was actually another question, yeah. comment somewhere in between that I had. So if you go to regular town meeting, a citizen petition only needs 10 signatures. Yeah. I believe for special town meeting, 100. Right? So will these people who got it with 10 need to like come back to 100? Or will they like, be able to slide in with the 10? signatures we should know so we can tell that's a great question yeah there's a few things that i'm following up with town council on and it's like it particularly because i know in 2020 there was a there were different exceptions because of the state of emergency and covid and um because a lot of those citizen petitions were moved from spring town meeting to fall um but just want to make sure that we're clear about if, if we tell a petitioner that we'll get there you know they'll be able to do their hearing in the fall, then I want to make sure that we're able to do that without them having to go and gather a bunch of signatures or the ARB necessarily advancing something that um, it may, you may or may not want to espouse. We can support them, Gene. I mean, if that's the case. I'm sorry? If they have their 10 for the regular town meeting, we're asking to postpone it until fall to keep everything together and you know, do that. We can say, okay, 
uh, if you need 100, you can't get 100 rules. They are beacons of what them in submitting that in. And what happens if they disagree? Right, that's my own. Right. Uh, well, right. Then we that's, haven't seen these. Well, we don't disagree, do we? And, well, I mean, let's take building you know, affordable my, housing everywhere. My, my, yeah, I know. Right, well, let's take even the industrial district animal daycare use. We were split about whether that was a good yeah. idea and decided we wanted to take a bigger holistic look at what needed to change in so, you know, so would we allow just one piece to go forward? I'm not sure. You're right. I'm sorry. I don't know. I mean, the, I would expect that citizen petitioners, that will be, you know, uh, that question will, I think that question will come up quickly. <laughs> yes. No, I, I, that's where, like, following up with them <laughs> tomorrow, I need to talk to town council before I, I need, you know, I need to make sure we're clear about what they can do and what they can't. So. And, um, Something else. Because this also affects your meetings in March. The only one that that can just go up there is just P. Uh, yes. P, right. Yeah. I mean, that's the only one that's just uh, don't really need anything. Yeah, that one. One would think, except yeah, the person, to get who's, moved off the the person who that. submitted it is still in town meeting, and last town meeting we just needed two people to move it off. So that might be a good question for Greg as to whether agenda. or not he's changing the yes. way that they are looking okay. for um, right. people to move things off the consent agenda. Because you're right, I wound up having to record six extra videos when everything got moved off the consent right. agenda. Right. And then there were some people who forgot to move them off the consent Correct. agenda. Right. Or, really? It was me? <laughs> oh, I changed my mind. Oh. I remember. <laughs> much, much better in person, I tell you. <laughs> but, okay, but I, I do see that one being a no-brainer. I don't know why it wouldn't be. I, 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 mean, I think we should try it. Right? I mean, the, right. the law is the law, right? I mean, yes. the Attorney General said you can't do that. We have a letter from the Attorney General on that one, right. so that so I, I can't, seems like it. And our original, yeah, yeah, you know, non-support of that. And, and my recommendation on that would be to have that as so on March 6th we have a continued hearing for 99 Mass Ave um, I would recommend that that be the hearing, the hearing date yep. for that amendment as well the other thing I was thinking of so the, the Arlington what's it called the New Chester Star it's no longer a newspaper it, it's some weird thing that's not a newspaper <laughs> anymore. And I and the real newspaper in town now is for Arlington. So I'm just wondering if there is a way that we can put the ads in your Arlington rather than that African star instead. So there the Massachusetts Municipal Association is is advocating with the state legislature to change the requirements for legal notices. Um, because it Beyond Arlington, there are many communities that the, their only option for advertising is the Boston Globe, which means that they have to pay tens of thousands of dollars for these kind of things. Um, and so, you know, there's, we, but at this point, we're still required to follow state legislation. And so until that changes, we're, we're really stuck with a print copy. I thought it just said the newspaper of general circulation. Does it say print? I believe it's print. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll double check on that, but yeah. it, the the accepted paper right now is that one. So yeah, we're, but yeah. It's worth looking, I think, or maybe having a conversation with town council about, mm -hmm. you know, what really is the news paper in town these days? It's a market basket advertisement. <laughs> I don't know about that. So I just want to go back to what could be on the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. um, because I know that in many other towns, far more of the zoning articles wind up living on the consent agenda and being approved. And I'm looking at these in the specific industrial um, articles that we decided to advance this year are in many ways clarifications. Mm -hmm. So the industrial district development standards really have to do with the stormwater yes. requirements, yeah. which I cannot imagine that anyone at town meeting has the 
background to debate. Right. And that is really coming from a recommendation from the Conservation Committee mm -hmm. and the... Uh, I, I just want to throw out there that I think that one could be potentially on the consent agenda. And, and I also think that the solar bylaw in yes. the industrial districts also could be on the consent agenda. The ARB jurisdiction is really bringing consistency, and you could make a case, again, if we follow the way that many other towns look at their zoning uh, articles and the consent agenda, that that could potentially belong on the consent agenda as well. So I'd like to open that for discussion because I, I feel that we have, uh, we could more robustly use the consent agenda for some of these other I mean, I agree on the solar bylaw in industrial districts because all this basically says is, yeah. you know, now that we've got AG approval for the solar requirement, this just conforms the wording in the industrial district bylaw to that. So I think that's good for the consent agenda. I'm not sure about the um, development standards because what I heard last time was that the Conservation Commission was thinking of coming up with a design of storm number. And I don't think that's the way to do it. So we need ourselves to have that discussion about it, and there may not be even an agreement on the redevelopment board about it. Couldn't we do that during the hearing, though? Mm -hmm. And by the time a recommendation is made, assuming the recommendation is made, that it would then go to go to the consent agenda because again yeah. I I just it becomes a, a technical uh, review and mm -hmm. uh, I think that very few town meeting members have the background to be able to weigh in on that type of a technical recommendation and I would hope that they would take the recommendation of the expertise that we have of the yeah. um, the town employees and um, the experts who are on some of the various commissions. Um, but that's what the consent agenda is for, right? It's to take the expertise of the people that we have hired to provide that expertise within the town. Yeah, we can try it. If, if the board is unable to come to an agreement on it, you could vote no action and then right. it goes on the consent agenda that way. So that, I, um, that does, right. yeah. So I think, yeah, I agree with you. I, if, I if we I could clear some of those out of the way, that would be I, helpful. So I, A, B, I, A, B, and C, and P? A, B, C, P. P. I, yes. I'm wondering whether C will really get consent agenda. No. I think people will take it off. It's okay. But the whole point is to go forward just with things that we have to stay on. Yeah, but if they take it off the zone, they don't need to go off that. They don't take the whole percent, or is it's all? They no, they take one at a time. One at a time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's all. Yeah, so it's not all. Of, all of us. It just if it's. Uh, we can try. I think it's coming off. What do you think? The, I I I would say A, B, and P, and I don't think that. C is going to remain on the. I don't. I don't even know if the town moderator would put that on the consent agenda. I, I think if we can clear A, B, and yeah. P, then that to me is a win. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can Can you send around because I looked on on the town website yesterday. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any of the long documents. They're not posted yet. Yeah. yeah. So can you send them? To I will. Us? Yeah. yeah. Both the ones, I mean the A through P's. Yes, I will. Then. All right. Any other questions? We have to officially vote at this vote about this vote. Excuse me. Vote on this <laughs> at our next meeting. I believe we need to have. We didn't have a vote on the agenda for tonight's Correct. meeting, so it and hasn't so been posted, right? yeah, I need to post. So that would be on the February 27 meeting that there would be a vote to move. Right. 
all amendments except for A, B, and P to special, special town meeting, meeting in the fall. Is there any concern about that? It's well in alignment? Okay. All right. Um, and that can I please just say getting back to A, mm -hmm. at some point soon, I think it would be helpful for me to have a conversation with David Morgan yes. or whoever is the person who's been thinking this. Pam. Yeah. Pam. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yep. I, I can connect you. I know that's the part of the yes. Great. Any other discussion on? Uh, Agenda item number one, which is schedule and outreach. Um, and I think we can probably dive more deeply into the schedule that um, Kelly revised and put together for us at our next meeting yep. after we officially vote to move these to special town meetings yep. in the fall. That looks good. I agree. I, I just. Um, this is in an hour, so there no, could be some specifics great. that were. My only concern yeah. would be moving. I would want the hearings, I think, to start in September. I think if they start in August, yeah, that becomes a, a bit of a challenge. But yeah, yeah, I agree. The big problem is going to be vacations. Well, the big problem is going to be so many coming up. All the ones right. that we have, plus plus any hearings, plus right. at least it sounds like two big ones. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So September is going to be. Uh, yeah. Back to school. <laughs> yeah, and it will be good to have all five members of the board. I will just say that I travel quite a lot in September and October, so I will do my best to try and keep that away from Monday evenings. Okay. Uh, so let's move on from agenda item number one to agenda item number two, which is the Department of Planning and Community, Department of Planning and Community Development Administrative Approval Overview of Recent Decisions um, that went through administrative review and approval. Sure. So at the prior hearing, I know there was a request um, to have a discussion about administrative review. Um, I went through the last from 2020 to 2022 just went through the various decisions and took a look at what had been um, the number of applications how many had administrative review as a recommendation and just following up just to check and see what the status of those things are um, so in 2020 there were 11 applications to the ARB uh, four of them in the decisions had um, administrative review so two of them were for um, you know of in a decision, we sometimes have a number of items that are for administrative review. Um, two of them had transportation demand management plans. Um, for example, I think 450, no, 882 to 892 Mass Ave had a requirement to submit a transportation demand management plan. Um, and I'll get into TDMs in just a second. The other, the other common item is signage and then affordable housing. So anything that requires monitoring or a lottery that also gets recommended to be um, subject to administrative review. Um, in 2021, there were another 11 applications, four of them with administrative review, same kind of items um, with the addition of bike parking, like working with town staff to determine if a potential bike parking location, I know that was for Dell's Lemonade, um, which wasn't actually feasible on the site, but there were other outdoor amenities that were put out there. And there are bikes? There is a bike. Oh, yeah, there is, that's right, yeah. But that's a town one. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. Um, and then in in this in last year there were 13 applications, and then nine of them had items for administrative review. Um, three of them were transportation demand management plans. Um, three of them were providing details or working with staff on bicycle parking, um, and then four of them were regarding signage. I will say the and then also with affordable housing. So there's certain things that do have a lag time, like anything with affordable housing. Um, it should be subject to staff review just because the affordable housing and the lottery and, and working with an agent to determine the lottery and get that out, that doesn't happen until the building is almost completed with construction and almost ready for occupancy. So for example, 882 to 892 Mass Ave, that decision was made in 2020. Um, the lottery 
will probably happen in March or April of this year. So it's definitely a long lead time before that kind of thing. You wouldn't want to hold a decision for administrative, or you wouldn't want to hold a decision until that was ready to go. Um, it, it's similar with transportation demand management. So I know like even with 455 to 457 Mass Ave, um, 882 to 892 Mass Ave, Sometimes elements of that transportation demand management plan are really dependent on the tenants, um, the commercial tenants, because the uh, what the ARB has typically decided in those decisions is that they've, they've decided where the bike parking is going to be, they've provided a reduction on vehicle parking, um, but the one or two outstanding elements on a transportation demand management plan are usually regarding um, providing benefits for the commercial tenants, like doing benefit, and, and that requires some kind of um, survey of the owners or the staff. And sometimes those occupants um, have not yet been determined. So, you know, the, again, at 882 Mass Ave, they're just signing a lease now with, a, with an occupant for that ground floor commercial space. And so holding the decision until that tenant is secured, um, it, it, tenants kind of come and go, and it and it really depends on the build out of a space. So that's something that potentially I think would continue to be appropriate for staff review if it's not explicitly determined at the time of the hearing. I think we do recommend that applicants come to the hearing with an idea of what their tr transportation demand management plan would be. We are also looking to Portland, Oregon, and San Francisco. Um, to try to see what other kind of innovative measures are our cities doing with regard to transportation management plans um, because it, our our list is um, I think it's a solid list but it's also a little bit difficult for some of the types of development that we see in town so just want to come up with some other ideas that we can provide to applicants when they're coming to us um, signage too I think there's some things where Again, the tenants haven't been determined, so we're waiting to see what those tenants are before we can review the signage. When a, when a development does have a new occupant or a new tenant, we really try to encourage them to propose signage that's within section the requirements of section 6.2 because it's, it's just an additional burden for new businesses to get started if they have to, if, and we, we, the reason for <laughs> the requirements in section 6.2 is because it does, create signage that is not overly large or doesn't have too many lights or you know that that it is like that it does comport with other signage in town so i think um I, and and then it, separately you know like with tate they came back to staff asking just we we reviewed the vinyl signage that was proposed for the entry doors just to make sure that it was within the six foot maximum area that was allowed for vinyl signage on front doors. So that's like the kind of administrative review that we typically do on following up on, staff, on that sort of thing. Um, the one particular, um, I know the one development in question at the last hearing was regarding 1500 Mass Ave. Um, and in that case, the, um, the applicant came back and, and this is before I was in this position, so I wasn't really involved in it, but it looks like the applicant came back and requested a reorientation of the parking. Um, and in doing so, that changed the parking spaces from four full-size parking spaces in one compact to five compact spaces. But it, it did provide more bicycle parking and it provided more access around the edge of the building. That kind of thing, I. Th that may be something that the board really doesn't want done administratively. And that's, I think, what I want to hear from you tonight is, you know, it, those kind of fuzzy areas, I know we really try to work with applicants on to make sure that if they're proposing something that is like pushing the boundaries a little bit, we, we try to work with them to bring it back in. Um, I think an example of that is what happened with um, the Arlington Animal Clinic, there were problems with, there were supply chain issues on some of the awnings. And so we had worked with the applicant extensively to really find a solution that was in line with what had been approved by the ARB. Um, because what they had come back with and saying that what was in stock was, was drastically different than what the ARB had approved. So that's something where we worked back and forth. Um, 
I guess this is, you know, this is kind of like an outstanding example. I, I wasn't able to find anything that was like, um, that was consistently like out of scope or, you know, if, if, I think the other example, just thinking about like 34 Dudley Street, you had provided a sketch for what the elevation should look like. And so when the applicant and attorney and Essie came back to me with the revisions, I checked it against the sketch and it looked in it, in it matched. So I proved that administratively. So I guess what I wanted to hear from the board tonight is like what kind of reporting back or what kind of, um, like how do you want to know about how administrative review items are handled? Is this something that you like, you want included on an agenda if there is an item that has been administratively approved so that you can know about it? Like, can I, can I raise this so yeah. that, right. like background why I raised it? Yeah. I didn't know that Mr. Seltzer was going to raise 1500 mass air. Okay. And, but he did send me some things after we went forward. But, yeah. um, I, I raised it because someone in town had emailed me to say that they had seen the building at the corner of Mass Ave and Medford School, I forgot the number of And we had said, no, you know, that siding that was proposed was not acceptable. And they could do, I think we gave them another choice and said, needs administrative review. So um, somebody said to me, did that administrative review ever happen? And what is the siding supposed to look like? And I had no idea. And that sort of was like a light bulb to me that there's been no feedback loop at all. And that's why I said sure. I wanted to have a discussion about the feedback loop. I, so I think there are two parts. I think to the extent that we as a board can give more definition to what the administrator review should look like, I think that's always better. Um, second is I think that we should be told we did administrative review on excess mass Ave and it's finished and here's what they're doing. So I do think it would be appropriate, at least for me, to know that that's going on. So even if it takes a year, you know, that that or you could say, you know, they did the TDM and the only piece that's left is, you know, what the commercial tenants going to to do and the TDM will be updated. So I think it would be helpful for us to know that because I think it will tell us too, are we giving the right mm -hmm. number of administrative reviews, the right information to the staff about what they want, things like that. Um, Jean, just can I ask a question? Are you thinking yeah. on a monthly basis that would be sufficient? On a monthly or whenever they do an administrative review, they okay. just come back next time and say, oh, we did the administrative review on you know, so if nothing's happened for three months, they don't come back for three months, but whenever there's an administrative review completed, they come to us and say, here's what it is and here's what we did. Um, I think that really closes the loop that we need to have closed. On, on 1500 Mass Ave, we did not authorize administrative review. I, I, read, the oh. I read the decision. Yeah. Um, we didn't authorize administrative review for that. And I said in my email to Claire, I was interested in understanding what the authority was to make those changes. And um, I don't think anybody has the authority to allow five compact spaces under the rules and no regular size spaces if I read the, um, read the bylaw correctly. So um, I don't know what to do with that one because it's an outlier. But if we knew that administrative review had happened, we might have been able to say, wait a second, you know, what was this about? We didn't authorize administrative review for that particular thing on, on those particular issues. So I think getting feedback even, you know, or coming to us and say, you didn't do administrative give, but this has come up, would you now you know, yeah, I think in that case, like that. And, and I'm not trying to like justify anything, but I do think in that case, like the first thing under our general conditions is that any substantive differences um, or any changes need to come back to the board. To the board. And so right. that would be like my recommendation going forward. If somebody came to us and said, oh, we need to change parking to this degree, then it would 
have to come back to the board to reopen the hearing. Right, so. but that didn't happen. And I guess, you know, according to Mrs. Seltzer, who sent me a bunch of stuff, there was also diff some other differences, but right. I won't get into those. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's why I raised it and what he sort of sent to me afterward just raised that other issue about about areas where we have not delegated administrative review. So that's that's where I was on that. Okay. I kind of interpret this a little differently than you had, Gene. Um, I think prior to Rachel, we used to do a lot more administrative uh, follow through, not review or, or decision, but just follow through. And you, and you mentioned that. I think you guys have been doing a great job on that. Because we, we can't follow the, 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 the thread of the thing all the way through. We just give a direction and say, okay, if we gave them intent we want just to head toward, and they can come back and submit a design or a revision based on what we noted, and we leave it up for them to follow through our, our, with our decisions. And I think that's been happening well. Uh, you know, the, I don't know, seven years, eight years, I've been on this uh, committee. We, we've done that, and I uh, thought that whenever we left stuff up for administrative review, or we'll follow through, not review again, then the follow-through has been good. I have never objected to anything to say, well, we didn't mean this. How did this get through here? You know, um, what you're saying is totally different from what I'm saying is, we never approved this and they built it. That's not an administrative review to me. No, no, I'm saying two things. The one thing is I'm not disagreeing with you that the staff has generally done a really nice job with administrative review. What I'm saying is there needs to be a feedback loop so we understand we ask them to do administrative review of, you know, the siding on a building and three months later they said we did it and here's what's and here's what the end result of that was. So just that it closes the loop. And on this one, yes, we didn't <coughs> authorize administrative review. So it's... Maybe, maybe that's a bad example, because yeah. I don't think we ever said, uh, we don't like this, uh, s this material in this building here. Why don't you guys work it out and administratively <laughs> decide upon it, okay? We, we sort of did that. Did we do that? Yeah. Uh, do, typically, we tell it. Then I'm like, oh, we should look at EFIS, or we should look well, at... Well, right, you look at X, Y, and Z. Direction yes. right. and precedence. Yes, and then they follow through on it. Right. So there's right. no, you figure it out. No, right. And if they can't figure it out, or it's something that they, they don't want to do, they come back to us. I, sh I agree with you, they should come back to us. But in general, I don't think that... Uh, yeah, um, Maybe I'm being misunderstood. I'm not asking for the applicant to come back. I'm just asking for the staff to come back and say, which, which I agree completed. with. I think it would be great, you know, to close the loop and say this. Yeah. Like this today, I approved a bracket to... sign for 37 Broadway. Right. So they'll take down right. that. There you go. Well, well, no, no, that yeah. was fine, but yeah. But, 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 but now we know. Yeah. And which, we don't have to discuss it. No, but what, yeah, but what about the red update? But what you bring up is concerning to me. Where this, this one, well, the wall is a different material than we approved. Is that true? I don't know. Is it true? I don't know. I don't think that's so. So that 455 to 457 Mass Avenue 2 to 14 Medford, that development there, that kind of brings up a different situation where the board approves something and that has to go to the Historical Commission. And so um, that's potentially a slightly different discussion about like what happens if the Historical Commission requires something that's different what the board did. But I think what has happened with that building is that there was board and batten on the ground floor of one facade and that's remaining but they're not introducing it elsewhere because the board had said so in the no decision board. that no board and batten right. yeah i mean one thing i you know to to that particular case where there is a subsequent review by a different body after yeah. we've granted a, a permit I would really prefer not to put the applicant in a review loop. Right. Um, I, I don't think that does anyone any service. I agree with you. Uh, but, but, if, but if the historical commission said, 
oh no, you need to go back to Borden Batten. I would want that person to be in the loop. And we would want to know. We would want to know. Want to know them to and we might want to say, back in front of us, we want to say we need to have, to have a discussion with a historical commission. Yeah, that's a historical commission discussion. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Like, yeah, with us. I mean, we different boards have different jurisdictions, and you know, in that in that case, I, I think I would be inclined to defer to historical, or or at least know that we need to understand where we may have a difference of opinion, so mm -hmm. that we can have a discussion, perhaps outside of that particular hearing. Oh, absolutely. So yes. that we can be better aligned going forward, mm -hmm. so that we're not giving them. Um, mixed messages. Yeah, rowing in the same direction is good. Correct. <laughs> but, but, right, you're right. That feedback loop will help us mm -hmm. know where we need to then mm -hmm. find and create alignment ahead of time. But the sure. burden is not on the applicants. Correct. Correct. Uh, okay. I'm just <laughs> don't want to burn. No, it's the no, burden's no. not in the applicant. It's about okay. us understanding yeah. how we okay. can better be in alignment in the future by hearing yeah. what occurs once okay. it leaves this space, yeah. but before it's fully constructed. I mean, I do drive around uh, afterwards and look at projects that we've approved in the past and see if, you know, were we accurate on, on some of our decisions? Were we, uh, were, how are the materials lasting? Is it being used? You know, uh, I'll give you one example uh, that I, strongly against and I, I almost didn't approve it which is that daycare center on broadway because i felt strongly that there was not enough room for drop off the kids drop off and it would create a cluster of traffic congestion there that drop off and pick up and i was wrong i will admit it i drive by there all the time and they manage it well and but they have allocated was adequate. So I, I mean, I do follow. Mm -hmm. It's great. You know, I mean, you know, so. The, the other thing that I think I'd like to think about is, is there are times when we ask the staff to do administrative review just because the applicants haven't submitted things that they really should have submitted along with the application, like. The lead checklist. The lead the checklist, TDM. And I, I think part of it is the staff, and I think you do this a lot, saying you need to do this. But then when they come without it, I think there's some point where we should say, you have to come back with it. You were given the opportunity and you didn't do it. I, I will say, so as part of this side project where I'm updating the whole application, um, that's where it's going to be much more clear. I mean, I think right now the checklist as part of the application doesn't include a lead checklist. Um, it doesn't include anything about a transportation demand management plan. The, the, the table of dimensional requirements doesn't include anything about bicycle parking. So those kind of things are hopefully in the next few weeks gonna be updated in the application, which will hopefully clarify as well, like you have to submit all of these things and it makes it much easier for us to right, check or things even out. Even how they've figured out the dimensional things yeah. and how they've figured out the gross floor area. None of that's there and it's hard and they don't always get it right and they're not always consistent. We're removing the requirement for a model, right? And right. putting in and sketch, sketch up. Okay, yes. good. Yep. We're just updating that. Can, now. Yeah. can you can you share the draft? I'd really be I will do that. Yeah, that was my intent. Is um, I think ideally, if I can get that to you for the hearing on the twenty seventh, just so you can take a look, um, and I definitely invite any comments on that because, I, you know, you go through each of these. You've, some of you have been on this board longer than I've been with the town, so yeah, just to understand that. Right. right. Anything else? So approval? just are we going to create this feedback loop so whenever there's administrative approval it will just be on the next agenda that this happened? That yes. would be great. Great. Okay. Sounds great. Great. Thank you. We don't have to vote on that, do we? No. Okay. Uh, yeah. Next is business districts, lot size, and FAR. Kelly, I'll turn it back over to you. Um, so this was just following up on a question that came up at a previous hearing, which is um, 
the question was really regarding mixed use and whether um, there's a, in the table of dimensional uses, it says mixed use and then there's the greater than 20,000 square feet and there was some vagary about whether that re was regarding the lot size or the gross floor area of a proposal. Um, we, I provided that memo um, as part of the uh, agenda, just clarifying um, historically, it had always been connected to lot size. Um, even before mixed use, there were, um, I think in the B5 district, there's mm -hmm. something about um, commercial development and it's really, or any other, any other building. <laughs> um, and it's in it, in the prior iteration of the zoning bylaw, it was attached to the square footage. I think there are certain clarifications that could be made to the zoning bylaw um, to make sure that the language is consistent and it's very clear that it's regarding the uh, parcel size and not the proposal or the gross floor area of a proposal. Um, but I think it was pretty clear in prior versions of the zoning bylaw that it's related to the parcel size. Yeah, I thought that was great research. Thank you, because I was the one who yeah. raised it. And I was going to suggest that we go to special town meeting in the fall <laughs> with, with, with some with some clarifications to make it clear to anybody who looks at that exactly what it is and then the one thing which you highlighted which i had seen you know that those get fixed and we go yeah. to town meeting with that is something that i'm checking with council to see if it's something that even has to go to town meeting it may be something that could be approved in minister or that could be there are certain things that we can amend administratively without having to go to town meeting in the attorney general and all that. So clarifying that and I'll report back to let you know if we're able to make that change. Right, Fantastic. yeah, that, that was very helpful. And by the way, I, I looked back as far as I could look and you might have more history than me to try to find out whether the step backs hmm. were related to the lot line or to the building wall. Huh? And I came up with, there was nothing that indicated one way or the other, you can look at um, bylaws from some other towns that are also silent, but you can also see bylaws from other cities and towns that are pretty specific mm -hmm. as to whether it's the building line or the lot line. And ours seems to have been silent forever. So <laughs> we're still gonna agree to disagree on this one? Well, we're gonna we'll amend to it. it at some point. We're gonna yes. amend it in the fall. To which? To what you folks want. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll I'll vote against it. <laughs> Move forward. <laughs> or or I, won't, I won't. I won't. I won't say. <laughs> at least it'll be consistent. Yes. At right, least so. will, at least it will be in the bylaw, and anybody can read it and understand it. And with regard to the like the mixed use, I also did a little bit of research on this and found the hearing draft where the language was introduced as, you know, with change tracking. Um, the, I do remember there being a lot going on at that, when the recodification was being passed. So um, yeah, I, it's worth tightening, it's worth clarifying. I will also add that um, I did some research into lot sizes for the B3 and B5. Um, and particularly in the B5, I think there's, there's one. one. Yeah, there's one part. There's actually not many parcels that are larger than 20,000 square feet. So it may be worth as a point of clarification in a future bylaw amendment just to eliminate that. Um, well, I, I'm sorry. It just adds maybe potentially unnecessary complexity to the zoning bylaw. I, I was thinking of B5 and the 40 and 80,000. Yeah, and there's one greater than 80,000, but nothing between 40 and 80. Right. It's helpful <laughs> to have that requirement. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Anything else under the lot size and FAR? Great, thanks for all that research. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is reviewing the meeting minutes. And Good we'll timing. start with November, right? It's about time, right? That we've. Uh, we'll start with November 7th. And I know that there were several um, revisions submitted prior to this meeting. Uh, so, uh, are there any questions on the revisions? I know that Kelly sent these out earlier. Sure. Are there any additional revisions for the November 7th meeting minutes, starting with Ken? 
No. Gene? No, just a quick thank you for Kelly to sending them all out so we didn't have to wonder whether they were in, <laughs> yes. on the website. So thank you so much. Yeah, great. Steve, uh, you, no. anything additional? Looks good. Okay. Um, is there a motion to approve the November 7th, 2022 meeting minutes as amended? So moved. Second. Great. Good. We'll take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. And yes as well. Those are approved. Uh, next, we'll go to November 21st, 2022. And again, these were submitted, uh, or excuse me, revisions were already submitted. Uh, Ken, did you have anything additional? Nope, it's the next one. Okay, Jean? No. Steve? Nothing here. All right, is there a motion to approve the November 22nd, 2022 meeting minutes as amended? So moved. Second? Second. All right, starting, I uh, will take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Those meeting minutes are approved. Uh, next up is December 5th, 2022. Several uh, corrections were already submitted. Ken, do you have anything additional? Yes, on page 25, 24, 25. What? Right here. Uh, I don't know where that is. Oh, is that of the entire? Oh, where is what? Does it say welder lights? Yes. Can you scroll up just a little bit? Do you mind if I drive? Drive, please. Okay. Chair requested. I don't know what Welder Heights is. Oh, that's on the 19th. Okay. Um, that's the next one. Well, I'm on the wrong one? Yeah. Oh, we'll get to that and then in the next. Uh, we're on the 5th right now. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yep, that's okay. I, I have no. Okay. Gene, any additional? None. Steve? Nothing here. All right, is there a vote to approve the December 5th, 2022 meeting minutes as amended? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, we'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. I'm a yes as well. Those have been approved. Uh, we'll now go to the December 19th, 2022 meeting minutes. And oh. back to you, Ken. Yes, on that second to last page, Walder. Yeah, I don't know what that means either. Uh, I'm going to guess, okay? Yeah. Um, I think it was bollard bollard lights or something like that yes because they had wall lights on the building yeah, and the next later in that um actually it's i think on the next page it talks about change the wall packs to bollards yeah oh. the first bullet point wall packs yes okay so bollards from welder amended yep okay great anything else gene none steve nothing I don't have anything else. Uh, is there a motion to approve the December 19th, 2022 meeting minutes as amended? So moved. Is there a second? Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Those meeting minutes have been approved. We'll go to our next agenda item, which is open forum. Seeing nobody here with us this evening, unless you have something you would like to say. I'm okay. You're okay. <laughs> Fantastic. We will close. Uh, Agenda item number five, open forum, and we will move to new business. Kelly, did you have anything for new business? Uh, just to report that we had our first meeting of the MBTA Communities Working Group. Um, we did submit our action plan in time, um, and we'll probably be meeting again in about two weeks, so I'm working on scheduling that meeting so we can do a visioning session and um, really get running. Very exciting. Yeah. Very good meeting. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Steve, you were in that meeting as well? Yes. Great. Fantastic. Thank you for representing the board in the meeting and for pulling all of that together, Kelly. Oh, that was a lot of work, Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> no, you guys are great. Uh, it's a I'm it's a very good group and I'll be excited to I'm I'm really looking forward to working with them. If I can add, I think we have um, we have pretty diverse representation on that group. We have some people who are working in affordable housing. Um, we have a number of architects, um, yeah, architects and planners, um, and then people who do a lot of work with, um, you know, reaching out to the community. So I think it's, and it's a lot of people who don't serve on other boards and commissions. Fantastic. So it's really new nice voices. to get to see some new faces, get some new voices, and um, also maybe a, like a 
more diverse age range than we normally see on yeah. other committees too. So it's it's a it's an exciting group to be a part of. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm on the old side, Jean. <laughs> Can you send us the plan that you submitted to the state? Yes, I will. Yep. Thanks. Great. Steve, you and, said and you said there's four of us that can't meet. Or is it three? Well, it's so a quorum. Uh, there are eight resident members. That includes you and I. I'm assuming that a quorum would be four. So um, no more than. So if it's you know, like a subgroup meeting, I believe it would have to be three or fewer. OK, I got a little confused on that one there. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a conversation with Claire some weeks ago about how often there would be report backs to us about what was happening and what the committee was working on. And I suggested whenever there were key decisions that were gonna be made. So I think it would be helpful to think about, you know, doing report backs to this larger board on a pretty regular basis. So we're not blindsided by no. what's going on. I will say, I think, um, by the meeting on February 27, we may have an idea of when another outreach event or community meeting will be happening. So we'll be able to, and, and we'll have had their second meeting of the working group by that point. So we'll be able to provide another upgrade, uh, upgrade, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> update at that point. Great. Great, so could I add one more? Business, please. Yes, um, just to follow what June said. I thought we, if we're a little bit slow on some of these meetings, maybe we uh, put back in on the agenda uh, all the other board members, all the other boards we sit on, just let's report back. Uh, mm -hmm. Just uh, update of what, you know. Sure. Yep. I can report back on the CPA, uh, what we're doing there. That'd be great. And uh, whatever else, all the boards are. Sure. That sounds good. All the other boards, committees I'm on haven't met in months. So. Then that's another thing that's. <laughs> Good or bad, I don't know. I don't know either. Well, mine was disbanded, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If I can Please. add one other thing. Um, when we did the solar bylaw, we decided to take out what was going to go into the, um, into the um, application and put it in the rules and regs instead. So yes, we have to update the rules and regs. Yeah, so we have to or do the hearing and that. Yep. And that the information obviously is, should go in the application too. But I can't think of any other updates to the rules and regs, but we should think if there are any. I don't think so. I'm, I'm gonna look back because I think there was one historically that Jenny had mentioned and I just wanna, I think it may have been about um, waiving fees. Oh, we didn't we didn't do that i thought we did no i don't think we've amended anything i know there was ah. a question about like establishing a rule about requirements for waiving fees or under what conditions we would do that um so i need to go back and figure out what that is before i can <laughs> present anything official um t uh two other quick updates so sure. on the on the meeting on the 27th um right now 190 to 200 Mass Ave is scheduled to come back, so long as they provide us with revised materials in time. Um, and then I think we can talk more about like a schedule for, we'll, we'll put in the vote for yep. special town meeting in the fall, and then we can talk a little bit more about like a more specific schedule for, for communicating with the public and other boards and committees. Um, so just that for that meeting, and then I'll also be able to share with you um, I'm just thinking about like the hearings in advance of town meeting. So if possible, because 99 Mass Ave is on the 6th and those other items should be pretty brief, I think we can look at reducing some of the meetings, the other meetings that are planned for March. Um, it would be and, great. And, yeah, I would love to. Yeah. Um, I love you all, but you know. We don't need to meet every week. No, it's okay. Um, so then thinking about like, just trying to get all of those other discussions in on the 6th um, and then keeping maybe one other meeting in March. Um, but at this point, I don't have, we don't have any other applicants um, going forward. Great. Um, and then finally, just a heads up that on March 1, um, Talia Fox, who's our sustainability manager, is working with the Clean Energy Future Committee on a bylaw amendment for 
adopting the, stre the specialized stretch energy code. Um, there's going to be a public meeting um, on March 1 in the evening we're presenting details about the stretch energy code and what it means and what they put, you know, it's a lot of it, a lot of it's like a listening session or Q and A. We're trying to reach out to town meeting members to um, educate them. We are having a separate developer builder meeting um, in February. So we can talk to the community, the development community about the specialized stretch energy code and both explain that and the stretch energy code, which is kind of our baseline because we are a stretch energy code community. Um, but by the first, we'll have a little bit more of an understanding and perspective of what that means for the building, like people who work in building and development, and then we'll be able to bring that back to the community. But if you are interested in attending or is interested in the stretch, the specialized stretch energy code or the stretch energy code, or stretch building code, like energy building, all of those things, um, that's going to be talked about on March 1. And my name for that? I'd yeah. I'd like to go. Sure. Um, one other question, because I think it's been about a year since they were last in front of us, is the Atwood House still in limbo with the Historic Commission, or has that development delay officially started, and are we at a year <laughs> yet, do you know? So, I think there is a conflict between um, the Historical Commission's understanding and interpretation of of demolition delay mm -hmm. and the state law. So okay. for state law, um, you have 60 days to, uh, the historical commission has 60 days to Surrender. schedule a hearing. Yep. Um, if that hearing has not been scheduled, then the typical demolition delay process begins. Yes. And at the end of that, the owner may demolish the building. Right. Whether or not the commission, so this is basically to avoid a situation where you would have a taking or a regulatory taking because right. the uh, body refuses to meet to discuss right. something. So um, my understanding is that per state law, if they have filed for demolition, then I believe as of last summer, they had may have been eligible for to demolish the property. So I'm going to follow up with, um, since you bring it up, I'll follow up with Inspector Champa. Okay. And see what the status of that is. Great. Um, You're 100 correct. Hmm? You're 100 correct. Yeah. The, the two years is up. Yeah. Time for them to do something with that property. That'd be nice. Bring them back in. Bring them back in. Yeah. It's still under special permit. <clears throat> okay. The hotel's gone, right? Uh, the last I had heard on the hotel was that um, they were having difficulty finding somebody who wanted to purchase a hotel, given the market. Um, the special permit lapses after three years. I think it's three. Yep. Uh -huh. And so we're getting close to that. Okay. Thank you for the update on both. You're you, you know, We'd, we never had a chance to have a discussion with the select board about that, but the way they went about determining what to do with that piece of town property was not necessarily ideal, in my view. Let's put it that way. So I think the purchase, do, am I right? The purchase has not gone through officially. Do you know, Kelly? I have no idea. Because if, if it's going to revert to the select board to decide what to do about it. It'd be nice if we could have some input mm -hmm. in to that decision. Okay. Okay. Anything else on your new business? Uh, I have one item. Please. So over the last couple of months, one of the groups I've been working with is, um, the, or one of the things I've been involved with is the town's equity audit. Um, so I've been one of the sort of um, steering or steering or advisory committee members. Um, I had a, we were given a presentation on the findings about two weeks ago. 
and uh, they're actually, I guess, get the select board is getting a presentation tonight. It's on their agenda. The the reports, which I hadn't seen until this weekend, are on Novus. But the purpose the purpose of the exercise was to assess a quality of like access and opportunity in three different areas. So there was um, civic engagement, uh, town employment, and housing. Mm -hmm. So of the 10 findings, two of them related to relate to housing. I'll just summarize them. I'm not gonna do the whole thing justice, but the general gist is that, you know, one of them is that um, Arlington is a racially segregated community, both within itself and with respect to the region as a, as a whole. And this has a couple of different reasons going back to like our use of restrictive covenants, uh, the history of FHA financing rules, and also, you know, our, our map to, to some extent. Uh, the other finding was um, renters feeling a general lack of support um, in terms of, you know, having advocacy, having someone to do, uh, inform them of their rights, that sort of thing. The couple of the sort of like the short summary of the recommendations in these areas were to um, establish and hire a housing specialist or housing liaison position um, to develop a community fund for rental assistance and rental and rental housing improvement programs, and also to um, some address some of our more restrictive uh, zoning districts. Thank you for the update. Mm -hmm. Anything else under new business? All right. Uh, with that, I will see if there's a motion to adjourn. So motion. Second. I'll second. Take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Gene. Yes. Ken. Yes. Tommy, yes as well. Thank you so much. Thank you.